Hey folks, today I'm here to talk about Nemesis. Now Nemesis is uh, two basic box sets. These are both uh, able to be played independently. Uh, you don't have to have one to play the other. They do tie in together uh, in different ways. And in a lot of ways it's two different games. But it's got the same basic principles across each. And I'd like to do a painted review to tell you about my impressions of both of them. So one of the first games I backed on Kickstarter was Nemesis. Uh, this is the original one. The basic theme for that is uh, it, it follows along the horror alien tropes uh, where you're on a spaceship, it's infected by aliens, uh, they kind of start to evolve and attack you, and you've got to find your way out or think of a no different contingency plan. A few years later, they followed up with Nemesis Lockdown, uh, this one closed out on Kickstarter for over like six million dollars. It was like six million four hundred thousand something dollars. Did very very well, and this has done very very well too. I believe uh, in Board Game Geek anyway. If you go by those ratings at all, it uh, it's it's climbed up and it's actually been pretty high, like in the thirties or something for uh, for a long time. These games have also got a lot of love from different uh, creators and stuff, and there's been a lot of videos made about it, so I'm not going to delve super heavily into uh, the mechanisms of the game, but let's go over a few things. Something important to understand in both versions of this game is that uh, there's a couple of different ways to play it. I've mainly played the co-op versions. That's because I mostly play with my wife, and especially during our real-world lockdown, it was... Uh, it was me playing with her mostly and my daughter, and we just don't go for the cutthroat stuff. Now, if I ever get a bunch of buddies over here, a bunch of a bunch of my guy friends and stuff that maybe like to take stabs at one another and have fun that way, uh, I would love to play the regular version. And I think that's really uh, kind of the way it's intended, but we have fun with it both ways. Well, I say we have fun with it. The funny story about Nemesis. Nemesis is one of the first Kickstarters I backed. Uh, I watched it come across the water. They sent the, the codes for the ships, and I followed it all the way through the uh, the canal and all the way up into port and stuff, and I just could not wait to get this. Uh, I got it home. I set it up and invited some friends over. Uh, I read the rules many, many times because this is, uh, this was early on in my uh, with my board gaming. I hadn't learned a lot of different types of board games, so learning this was was pretty difficult. This was one of the first games I really tried to master. So I learned it the best I could. I had my friends over, and uh, we had a little game night. Well, sometime halfway through the game, uh, I also work on call for in IT stuff, and I got a call, and I ended up on that call until maybe 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh... My friends did the best they could to kind of finish the game up. I died, of course. And, uh, <laughs> and then they all went home and said, I'm so sorry. So I had a really bad experience. It wasn't the game's fault at all. It was just kind of one of those things that happened. Uh, we got together again and we had a little bit better game and stuff. I had all the miniatures painted and we got together and played again. And we had a good time. But me being sort of new to gaming... And having, uh, having this as now uh, my heaviest game, it meant it didn't make it onto the, uh, onto the tabletop as much as we'd like. And because we had such a bad experience with the first time, uh, my wife especially grew to really hate this game. And then we started to refer to, th refer to things as Nemesis Long. Because the game does take a really long time to play, especially when you're maxed out with your player count. In fact, I put off doing a review on the original version of this for a long time because, one, uh, the miniatures weren't that great. Uh, the miniatures that came with the original version of this, uh, I don't know, they were a little melty. It didn't, they just weren't very good quality at all, uh, especially compared to even, like, Simon does a much better job than they did uh, on their first try. I thought the aliens all looked okay, pretty decent, but the people just didn't look right at all. It looked cheap. The artwork, however, on the other side, the artwork is just really, really good. Very, um, very moody uh, and very really does a good job of setting the theme up. If you back during lockdown or you get a later version, like a second printing of this, uh, they do have better miniatures. I did notice a huge improvement when I got over to the lockdown stuff. Now, like All the miniatures on this one uh, seemed pretty acceptable. 
Uh, there's still not the greatest miniatures I've ever seen. Of course, you know, if when compared to Games Workshop and other places like that, you can't really compare these types of games and those types of games because it's a different hobby. But they were very much improved, very much improved over the original Nemesis ones. And you can buy extras. I chose not to. I just decided I didn't care. <laughs> They're painted and done and I didn't want to do anything else with it. For these guys, I went with this kind of bronzy uh, blue kind of color scheme and uh, I did a real wet version of the uh, of the wash. I really painted this with a lot of kind of older techniques that I've used before. At this point contrast paints weren't a thing. If they were I would have painted them all with that. That's been really amazing especially with these models because they're kind of uh, they offer this pre-painted version which like a shaded version. Uh, I think they call it sun drop shading. It's fairly expensive and you can definitely do it yourself uh, with some contrast paints and even add a few more colors in. Uh, when I painted these guys, I uh, switched over to contrast paints and the, the fact that I had a like a better way to paint them and better miniatures, I, I felt like they came out a lot better. I also have the expansions for these. I haven't really played them, so I didn't bring them out to talk about. I've played both of these quite a, quite a few times. Uh, but I haven't played with like any of the expanded material. So this game I played solo uh, more than I played with other people. Uh, I did play it solo a few times and I found playing it at low player counts, like even if I'm playing a couple of different people, even three people, uh, it plays in a pretty reasonable amount of time. You're still going to want to block off an hour, an hour and a half, an hour, maybe two hours <laughs> at least uh, to play a quick game. I mean, you could die, like, really quickly, and then it, it's a really quick game. But, like, to get reasonably complete the game, I would say at least two hours, probably closer to two and a half. And as for more people, just add, like, 40 minutes to every single person that you add to this, and you get close anyway. It seems to be the same for uh, either version of the game, too. They play essentially the same. Uh, the way it works with this game is you each character, you have all these archetypes of characters. And uh, like there's captains and there's pilots and mechanics and janitors and psychologists and medics and scientists. All the classic tropes. And uh, each of these uh, characters will have ten cards. Out of those ten cards, uh, they're going to deal, they're going to draw, or shuffle and draw up five. And then the card faces have things that they can do. But there's also, uh, but you could also use them, like just kind of burn the cards to pay for general actions. So basically, after the players play their cards and have a turn, then the game has a turn. And an event card is pulled, something terrible happens or not. It also moves some aliens around. Aliens do their attacks and stuff. Uh, and then you do what's called a bag development, which kind of represents the, the uh, aliens on Nemesis uh, evolving and changing and moving around uh, where you'll you'll pull a you'll pull a token out of a bag and then you kind of read through a chart to see what happens sometimes you just hear some noises around and sometimes things evolve and sometimes things come out and bite you then you redraw cards into your hand and you start again all this is going as the timer is going uh, in the in nemesis lockdown I guess the corporation's gonna gonna detox the facility somehow in some terrible way for you so you've got to get out or make other arrangements and a nemesis it's about to go into hyperspace which will just splat you against the wall unless you can get into hibernation or escape from an escape pod both of these games are effectively a crisis management simulator uh, where things go from bad to worse to worse to worse to worse and you try to deal with it it's like one of those 80s sitcoms where Things just kind of spiral out of control until somehow magically it all works out. Or does it? Because quite often you're going to die, Blade Nemesis. And all the action coming from the aliens and the events are all represented by cards. Uh, intruders, intruders and all the other different types of aliens have uh, their own sets of attack cards and their own events too. I've only really played against the, these two. I've read the other cards, of course. And uh, they do a pretty good job of kind of differentiating things a little bit and kind of changing things up. It definitely adds a lot of replayability to have a, a couple of different options. Even if you've just got the two core boxes, you can play the Intruders in this game and the Night Stalkers in this game. And uh, yeah, it's fine.
getting the Kickstarter extras for these games. Like this had a separate box that was all of its uh, its 3D terrain stuff. So it's like escape pods and doors and stuff. And this one, the Kickstarter extra came with these doors that break apart and, uh, and a couple of upgraded tokens as well as another whole alien race. So there's a few things in there you might want uh, or maybe not. Uh, it, nothing essential to playing the game and nothing that's going to make it like so much better that, um, that it, the game's kind of pointless without it. I would say, in short, uh, you could be happy with either one of these. I think I like this one better. Uh, well, I definitely like the miniatures and everything better in this one, but I also like that it adds it adds a few other extra rules, like uh, being able to take computer actions and do things. Uh, the power turning on and off, I, I think, is, is really interesting, too. I love trying to peek at the little CSS pods to see if you're able to escape and stuff. I, I like to knock lock down just a little bit better the Nemesis, although I love the theme of both of these. But if you're curious about Nemesis and just want to give it a try, uh, either one of these are great. Uh, if you go with this first one, see if you can get a newer version of it that was just printed this year. Uh, the older ones are fine, and they still play fine, but maybe it would have a little bit better miniatures. Uh, or at least don't pay as much as you would for uh, one that was just printed. This one just came out and it might be kind of hard to find or it might be, the prices might be a little bit up there or it might be a little bit easier to find because any retail stores that bought it might have copies sitting around. I know when they re-released this one, my local game store had a whole wall of them and I was really tempted to swap it out and just paint them again. I made another video about blinging out your Nemesis game and also playing it with other characters and stuff. That's how much I hated those, those models. I actually played this with Firefly characters a few times, and it worked out pretty fun. Although it was really sad when Al couldn't get to the self-destructing time and the whole crew died in hibernation, but it was interesting. The one big thing about Nemesis that you'll always get is a cool story. Uh, it's so thematic. Uh, it's the most thematic of any of the games I've played. Uh, you really feel like you're dealing with problems and uh, on a spaceship or a space station, and uh, it... Uh, you can feel the stress that comes with uh, trying to escape. Okay, just a little bit of a final thought with Nemesis. I, of the two titles, I, I feel pretty equally about them. I do think that this adds a little bit extra. So if I was going to get one copy of it, I would go with this. And you completely can. And that's because there's a whole lot of experiences built into just the way even the basic game works. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot of randomness to it, which can make some games amazing and some games just absolutely miserable, but you always have a good story. It's like if you watched the same movie over and over again, but you kind of forgot the way things happened and then you somehow were uh, surprised again at the outcome. That's sort of what it feels like. I can't tell you how many times a malfunctioning coolant center uh, causes the auto-destruct sequence to start when I still need like three turns to accomplish my mission. Things always get really hectic, but they're supposed to be. Really the best way to play Nemesis is just embrace the chaos. There are lots of accessories for Nemesis, not the least of which is, it is when I initially backed Lockdown, I just wanted to get the neoprene mat for the original one. I was like, I don't need it. I don't need this one too. But I wanted it. it. They just put so much neat stuff in it that, like, after the campaign ended, I went back and backed it. Uh, well, it was a late pledge. And uh, the neoprene mat, I got the neoprene mat for both. And they are really, really nice. If you got one, one accessory, I would definitely recommend this. Uh, the rest of the stuff I got is only things with rules that changed the game. I didn't get the extra cats, for instance, and they had these um, in the Kings. I, I didn't get any of that. And I also haven't played with any of the expansions. It's like they were pointless. <laughs> I'm happy to have them and stuff, and I am a bit of a collector. I like to get all of things, but I'm trying to break out of that. So I only got most of it. <sighs> We've been having so much fun now that lockdown's here and playing this a little bit more. It gave me an excuse to break all of this stuff out and play it some more. And uh, we've been having so much fun, I'm tempted to now go get the, uh, the new and improved minis for this one and paint them again. 
especially when I paint the intruders again, I wasn't super happy with that paint scheme. If you're gonna paint these, paint them with contrast paints or the new war paints. Uh, I actually used a little bit of that in some of these too. These things were made to paint with these contrast type paints, and not for them specifically, but for the process that they use, if they wanna tint them for you. So if you want the sun drop where they kind of put a coat of coloring on it, it's like maybe one, I think maybe two colors, I'm not sure, primarily one color. And it's like they've just kind of dipped it. And because of that, they make a lot of the details and stuff in these models. They have deep recesses and they're, and, uh, and they really show up well, you know, when you give it that treatment. I painted almost all of this in a week. And I'm not saying my paint job's the greatest or anything, but they're painted and they're all right. And they're on the table. So if while you're playing this game, someone knows the rules really, really well, I think it's gonna make a huge difference in your enjoyment of the game. Uh, it, it, is, it makes so much sense to play this solo. If you're gonna play this with other people or you want other people you play with to have a good time, play it solo because it's almost the same. Add, a, add two, you know, take two people and play a game through. It's not that bad. The biggest slog for this thing is the setup and tear down and you can augment that with uh, inserts and stuff. I like this game enough to probably get one of those inserts. I didn't buy any of those on the Kickstarter campaign. They had some super fancy ones. I probably, uh, I don't know. It might be cheaper at this point to just buy a laser cutter. <laughs> I got a three, I got a three D printer for Christmas too, so maybe I'll make some uh, inserts and stuff, particularly for the cards. I have found some cool ways to work around uh, organi organizing the cards, but they don't work if they're sleeved. I haven't sleeved any of this yet either, so that might be coming, especially for the player cards. But I think that's about it. Let's put these games back on the shelf. I'll be back real soon with another video. I think the next one I'm going to do is Maglev Metro. Uh, it's a fun play, but it's got a few issues. We'll discuss it. If you'd like to see more painted reviews, you can click up here. If you'd like to see something YouTube thinks that I've made that you'll enjoy, you can click down here. And right here for a subscription, I'd love to see you again. Enjoy your games.